In the Middle East, there is a war against Christianity. There is this movement that Christians need to be wiped off of the face of the earth. ISIS and Christians, ISIS, mass ISIS Christians, some ISIS of them beheaded. ISIS issuing their ultimatum to Christians in Iraq. Convert to Islam, pay a fine, or face death by the sword. That means beheading. Chaldeans are the ethnic group from Iraq that are Aramaic speaking, which is the language of Christ and are the Christian minority of the Iraqi region. Chaldeans, the, the ethnicity, goes back from Old Testament times and from the ancient people of Mesopotamia and Babylon. We are the only one that uses Aramaic both as a liturgical language and as a spoken tongue. We pray in the language that Jesus spoke in, but we also speak in that language as well. We are bringing the prophetic tradition of the Old Testament to make it part of our own culture today. Catholicism is actually uh, sort of the blood of our identity. We believe that God is Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's something that is contradictory to the faith and religion of Islam. We might not have enormous basilicas or cathedrals because they, they've been wrecked so many times over and over again by different types of persecution, but there's a certain purity of faith that's there that is, is really genuine and really something very beautiful. The Nazarene N is the letter Nun N in Arabic, which is the which is what Muslims call Christians by Nazareans because we're followers of Jesus of Nazareth. Kind of similar to the Star of David, members of the Islamic State mark that on the houses of the Christian homes. They hit the Chaldeans because they know that Iraq is the land of the Chaldeans. It's not unique to Islam to persecute Christianity. Throughout all of our time in the church, we have been persecuted. Since the Persians, the Mongolians, the Muslims back in the day and the Muslims now, we have been persecuted and, and our church is still thriving. Another name for the Chaldean church is the Church of the Martyrs. Martyrdom is the perfect and the culmination of the conformity to Christ that St. Paul talks about. It is dying for Christ and in union with Christ who died for the salvation of the world. Thousands of Christians living in Mosul, Iraq, forced to flee after the threat from the ISIS group, saying this, convert, pay a protection tax, or be killed. <laughs> <laughs> Very recently, ISIS captured Assyrians and uh, their hostages now, most of them women and children. Um, one of the Assyrian leaders came out publicly and pleaded with ISIS and said, uh, please just kill our women, don't rape them because uh, being raped is like dying a thousand deaths. But ISIS is going to rape them because he begged them not to. It's really horrifying to see them not just take over for the sake of taking over, but to see them go and destroy just for no reason other than just wanton destruction. And in their eyes, it's idolatry, or I don't know what, but that's unique. That's a kind of savagery that I don't think the world has seen in a long time. This evil is wiping out Christianity from its birthplace. They're killing people because of who they are and who they pray to and what they believe in. This is a battle of good against evil. And the devil is uh, on earth and it's called ISIS. Not just Christianity and, and the Chaldean church, but any body that represents civilization and, and any kind of sophistication and any kind of noble humanity is going to be their target because of their savagery. Yeah.
My family was born and raised in a village uh, in northern Iraq called Al Qush. Our freedom was restricted in Iraq based on uh, our faith. As Christians, although never stated, uh, we were always sort of as a second class citizen. There was always some restriction where you were afraid that since we were Christian, uh, something might happen. They came because of uh, tensions between Muslims and Christians, mostly at the time, was Saddam's reign and sort of the terror that came with that. They kind of saw the writing on the wall, so they, so they left. At the time, I heard almost nothing but complaints about Saddam Hussein when he was in charge. Now, people look back at that and think, oh boy, was, was that, wasn't that a whole lot better than what we're facing these days? <laughs> When we was in Iraq, there was no school at Sundays, so we were sleeping. I, I heard a sound, bump sound, and it was really loud. So I waked up and it was like all the windows were falling down and the doors were open and... Where did the bomb come from, do you know? No. Was that the first time you had seen a bomb? No. Uh, but that was the loud one. Because they, they tell you that you have to like believe in other religions that you don't want to believe. Like you only want to believe in one God that we believe in, but they don't like... But before? They, they just tell you to not, or they will kill you. Not only ISIS, like more than ISIS, people were like not good people and it was dangerous right there. So my daddy said we need to go. We need to leave Iraq. They started with taking our villages, all in northern Iraq in the Nineveh area, all of our Chaldean villages. They have already taken those over, and now they want to make all the Chaldeans part of their state. Last year, before ISIS even took over, I met barely anyone who didn't want to leave. The only Christians that are still in Iraq are the ones that can't get out. There's nobody that doesn't want to get out. They're in line for several months to get into an office to get their name on a list so that in 20 years they can be given refugee status in some other country. This folder is, uh, and the list is a list of 70,000 people. These are people that have contacted us and said, please rescue us. We've lost our homes, we've lost our property, we've lost everything but our faith. If you let us live in the desert, in camps, we will die. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Truly I tell you, in as much as you have done it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. You see how important the faith in Christ is for these people that not one of them has rejected their faith and joined the Islamic State for a peaceful life. They have left their houses, they have left their families for Christ. You see, redemption is, th as Jesus showed us, is through the way of the cross, through suffering and through acceptance of that cross. If they want to kill me and they told me, you want to be Christian, or you want to be other thing, like Muslim and other thing, I will tell them, kill me now because I'm yeah. going to be Christian. Yeah, me too. <laughs> like, me I would too. rather die me for can. Jesus than be, like believe in other religions. Christ was persecuted and crucified for telling the truth. For us, it was more of a sign saying, 
you know what, I must be saying something or I must be preaching or living a certain way of truth that I am being persecuted. And that's why, you know, most of those who were martyr, can you imagine, were taken from the altar. Yeah. And, and uh, Bishop, my colleague, they were taken from the church. Strength is there. Spiritual power is there. It's in the sanctuary. It's on the altar. And that is the Chaldean way. Oh, this is Christ way. I think the first Christian response always is prayer. And through prayer, I think, is implied, when, if I were to ask God for something, really what I'm implying by that is, use me also as an instrument to bring about this good thing that I'm praying for. When you pray, you feel like you're saying the thing in your heart, and you're, and you're talking to God, that's what it is. Yeah, and like when you pray, you feel safe. Like whenever I'm scared, I always pray, and then the scaredness like, just goes away from me. been able to to feel this kind of hope until I saw ordinations of men born and raised in America within the Chaldean tradition with a great Chaldean spirituality deciding to give their lives to God within this very secular context that we find in America yeah that's a good response to ISIS because it shows them do your worst and we will still live and we will still thrive and you know, a few months ago we had to move out and into a larger seminary because we're expanding. Okay, go ahead and do your worst and we'll show you how powerful the gospel is and you will trust in your horses and your chari chariots and we'll trust in the name of the Lord and we'll see who's going to win. Because salvation is from the altar. It's not from the world coming to the altar. The world will not save the altar. The altar will save the world. The only thing I would end off with is, I think, uh, we just need prayers. Prayer is what is needed now because there's nothing else that can be done. To, to the Christians of the West, I would say, wake up. We're living back into the times of the early church where uh, the Romans are feeding our people to the lions.